Breaking news last night, Tesla shareholders have backed their guy. Yes, there was uh, two important votes measures that Tesla just had taken with their shareholders. The first was approving Elon's pay package, the $56 billion pay package that was voided by a Delaware judge. We talked about that on episode 164 back in February. And then moving Tesla's incorporation from Delaware to Texas. This is also major. Remember, we talked last week about the Texas Stock Exchange. Here's the two charts. Massive, overwhelming support. There were some notable people who dissented. I think Norway's Sovereign Wealth Fund and Calpers were two of the ones who were voting against it. Tesla share price popped 6% on the news. You don't want to lose Elon at Tesla. That would be really bad. So your thoughts, Chamath, on this vote and maybe the move and what that represents. It's kind of odd that we're in this crazy place. Say more. When that original package was unveiled, there was a lot of people, including me, who thought there's no way he's gonna hit this. It's just way too aggressive and it requires so many things to go right. And so I think in part, that's why three quarters of the Tesla shareholders approved it then. 73% is not squeaking over the line. It's not 50% plus a vote. It's it's a super majority. And that excluded Kimball and Elon shares. Exactly. So and then I think you had this very dangerous form of judicial activism, which essentially ignored the will of the shareholders and tried to create some administrative ruling that threw up this big question mark. So then in in typical Elon style, he's like, great, we're just gonna get them to vote it again. And then yet again, it passes and it looks like it's gonna pass by around 73%. But the problem now is that it's still not clear what happens. I think that there's still some question marks where this may not nullify the judge's decision it may actually create more question marks. Elon Musk's $56 billion pay package represents a revolutionary approach to executive compensation crafted to align with ambitious performance milestones designed to propel Tesla forward. The sheer size of this package has sparked widespread discussion and debate, particularly about the appropriateness and effectiveness of such substantial executive incentives. However, a deeper look into the intricacies of this package reveals how it is engineered to align Musk's interests with those of Tesla's shareholders, potentially driving the company to extraordinary new heights. Unlike the more conventional structures of executive pay, Musk's compensation package is distinctive in its entirety. It eschews traditional elements like salary and bonuses, tying his financial rewards solely to the achievement of specified performance targets. This alignment ensures that Musk's earnings are directly contingent on Tesla's success, providing a potent motivator for him to focus intensely on the company's growth. And so hopefully this gets sorted out. He should get this stock. He never should have poured these options. He never should have had them taken away. And so I just hope this thing, yeah, it becomes a nothing burger. Sachs, you have thoughts on this outcome? Is it surprising to you? Not surprising? And then I, I think the jurisdiction thing is bigger than maybe people are thinking because Delaware has been the standard for incorporating companies, but Elon is putting his companies in Nevada and Texas. We saw the stock exchange uh, last week getting back to move to Texas. This does seem like there's something about jurisdiction in the water. What are your thoughts, Sachs? The performance milestones embedded in Musk's compensation plan are exceptionally ambitious reflecting a bold vision for Tesla's future. Central to these targets is the achievement of a remarkable $650 billion market capitalization, alongside significant benchmarks in revenue and profitability. While these goals might appear overly ambitious to some, they are emblematic of Musk's unwavering confidence in Tesla's potential to revolutionize the automotive industry and dominate the expanding electric vehicle, EV market. The $56 billion figure, though striking, serves a crucial purpose beyond its sheer size. It is a constant, tangible reminder of the vast value Musk stands to gain if he can steer Tesla to meet its formidable targets. 
This monetary incentive is not merely about personal enrichment. It acts as a catalyst, energizing Musk to push boundaries, foster innovation, and accelerate the company's growth trajectory in unprecedented ways. Well, I think it's ironic that the winning margin, 73%, is the same margin by which shareholders approved his comp package back in 2018. So again, they got 73% voted for this 2018. Now they voted to reapprove it by the same margin. And the reason why they had to do it is because this activist judge in Delaware avoided it on the grounds that somehow the original shareholder vote wasn't valid. And I think this is interesting that the margin didn't change because it shows that shareholders aren't ingrates. Elon delivered what he promised, and now shareholders are upholding their end of the bargain. And certainly they didn't have to take that position. There were different groups like Calsters who basically took the position, what have you done for me lately? You know, yeah, you delivered, but we don't have to pay you because of the judge, so we're not going to pay you. And I think shareholders wisely approved the package because I think there was some chance that if they reneged, that Elon could leave the company. And I still think he's absolutely vital to all the innovation that's going to come in the future from Tesla. And you see this, the stock is ripping on the news is up about 3% today in a down market. So clearly the market thinks that securing Elon's future at the company was the right decision and shareholders did the right thing. Yeah. In, ter in terms of the, the downstream effect on this, like you said, it raises the specter of Delaware being an activist state. That's yeah. not why anyone incorporates in Delaware. The reason why you incorporate in Delaware is because you think it makes you subject to an extremely predictable body of corporate law Correct. that's been tested and become Correct. bulletproof over many, many decades. And now all of a sudden, you have to worry that maybe a judge will set aside Musk's motivation fueled by this pay package, is likely to manifest in several critical areas that are essential to Tesla's ascent. 1. Scaling Production One of Musk's primary focuses will be on significantly ramping up Tesla's production capabilities to meet the growing demand for its electric vehicles. This will involve not only optimizing existing manufacturing processes, but also expanding production facilities and refining supply chain logistics. By doing so, Tesla can enhance its ability to deliver high-quality vehicles at scale, meeting consumer demand more effectively. 2. Expanding Product Portfolio Tesla's lineup is poised for rapid expansion, with upcoming models such as the Cybertruck, Semi, and the next-generation Roadster. Musk's drive will be crucial in ensuring these new vehicles are launched successfully and on schedule, enabling Tesla to capture a broader segment of the market. Each new model will need to resonate with consumers and demonstrate the innovative edge that Tesla is known for. A shareholder vote for reasons that seem incredibly specious, especially in light of the fact that the shareholders just reapproved it. So hmm. obviously the shareholders di didn't think they needed your protection and they voted to reverse you. And moreover, Tesla could still be subject to paying the legal fees of these trial lawyers who've asked for literally billions of dollars in legal fees that the judge still has to rule on. So imagine this. Imagine that the shareholder vote gets set aside by the judge. It then gets reapproved by shareholders. But the trial lawyers who brought this nuisance suit can now get billions of dollars. If that happens, I mean, Delaware can kind of kiss its status as the premier corporate law state away. Friedberg, is this a John Galt moment? Is this where capitalism, socialism, and the state collide and people now start thinking, hmm, maybe we need to create a new jurisdiction, a new framework. It's a good question. I think it's a good example for capitalism. And I think it should shine the light on how other CEOs are getting compensated at public companies where there's typically a multi-million dollar or multi-deca million dollar pay package that has no dependency on the performance of the business. You can make tens of millions of dollars a year and not drive shareholder value. And I think that the way that this deal was structured, where Elon effectively got 10% of the company for 10xing the stock, should be an example that other boards should actively consider when considering both candidates and their appetite for this sort of a package and their compensation packages themselves. The way executive comp typically works at the board level at public companies 
is you hire these comp consultants. And the comp consultants come in and they use comparables, which basically means let's do what everyone else does. And so you have this self-reinforcing system of compensation and benefits for CEOs that bumps up a little bit every year that ultimately has not has some degree of ownership in the stock, but fundamentally has very little downside. And Elon had no guarantees in his pay package when he got this comp package originally in 2018, and he got 10% of the company if he 10 x the stock, which is what he did. I really think that it is worth having this become the kind of beacon for all boards to consider. And it seems like shareholders in aggregate are applauding the concept. And look, Elon is a special guy and he gets special treatment. But I think that it moves the needle and should move the needle a little bit for other CEOs and other boards to stand up and say, we should think about something that looks a lot more like this than what we typically do. And I think you would find a very different cast of people showing up to become CEOs and to drive performance out of these businesses and a lot more risky and aggressive behavior than what I think you would typically see in big companies that are in maintenance mode. What do you guys think of the organizations that initially voted yes and now voted no? They basically are saying, look, I mean, if you think about it, you're a big public company. I don't know what ISS recommended. This is institutional shareholder services. They, they, they recommended no both times. Right. And so ISS basically is what a lot of big public fund managers will follow when they make their votes. And so if I'm a shareholder, that's not what I'm, that's not what I'm asking. No, no, I, I know saying. what I'm saying. But like, let's say, let's say that I'm BlackRock, or I'm a shareholder, a big, I'm not going to put BlackRock as some big shareholder of Tesla stock. Why would I vote to give away 10% of the company when I don't have to? Yeah, very simple. Because he would leave. Uh, he would morals leave. and ethics matter. And you want to do the right thing and you want to incentivize capitalism to operate properly and want to incentivize the people who take on the burden of running these companies and the people who voted against it. I think people should just make a list of those individuals, Chamath, and they totally should not do with business you. with them. Business because with them. if somebody I is going to double cross you, they've shown agree. you who they are. These are people who double cross them. They got the benefit and then they stabbed yeah. them in the back. Make That's a list. exactly what they did. Musk's intense focus on these strategic areas will have a cascading positive effect across Tesla's entire ecosystem. Increased production capacity will drive economies of scale, reducing costs, and making Tesla vehicles more accessible to a broader range of consumers. A diversified product portfolio will attract new customers and bolster Tesla's market presence. Progress in battery technology and autonomous driving will reinforce Tesla's position as a technological leader, attracting further investment and talent. Despite the compelling incentives, the journey to becoming the world's most valuable company is fraught with challenges. Tesla operates in a highly competitive environment, facing intense rivalry from established automotive giants as well as emerging EV startups. That's exactly what they did. It's worse if they voted yes the first time and then they voted no. No, I'm saying and, and there's a no, no, group. then maybe you're just against the deal. But if you're yes, no, then that's a, a, a reneg. Then you're a true scumbag. You're a scumbag. Is that public anywhere who did that? Yeah, there are a bunch of folks that said that they, you know, I think it was CalPERS that voted yes. And then when they were on trying yeah. to explain, they were like tap that dancing in like corporal jargon. But really what they are, are scumbags. Jason, you're right. They are morally and ethically void and it, they're reneging. And this yes. is the one rule in business you're not allowed to do. And the people that do that are these penny pinching scumbags. I'm not saying a blacklist, but I would say making a list of people who maybe you want to consider not doing business with is how I would frame it. These are people yeah, they're public, who they're public market investors they're not private investors. They buy the stock on the open market, so they don't have to worry. I mean, I think the question is, what are the chances that Elon leaves the company if he does, didn't get the pay package? The chances I think that probably, was a risk. And I think that, that was a non-zero possibility. Think about it. Yeah, non-zero yeah. possibility. You made an agreement with somebody and you shook their hand. Yeah. What, what, why exactly. does it care whether he would have le left or not left? This is like, you have to do the right thing. Yeah. You have to do the right thing. You promised the guy X amount of money for doing Y amount of things. He did the Y things. And then you had a judge come over the top because of somebody who owned 10 shares. And right. all I'm saying is if you, if you don't have the intellectual intelligence to look past that and say, wait a minute, we just paid the guy to do this work and now we're going to renege. They're gaming the system. I just think that like, how can anyone who is capable of doing a job sign up for a pay package? How could anyone? And the people that will sign up are these like middling corpo people who will accomplish nothing, 
and will run these companies in ways that then speaks to organizations that have just proven themselves to be totally unreliable. The irony of the thing is that these folks thought that they were getting a 10% free roll when they voted no. And the reality is that by him getting the pay package, the certainty of him sticking around at the company caused the stock to go up by 10%. So they right. actually had the calculus wrong, that if they had gotten their way, the stock would have declined by more than the 10% free roll they thought they were getting. This is, I think, the, the main point. And 10% here. being the free ownership bar. of the company that he gets. Yeah. The pay package was laughed at on CNBC by all the experts. There is no way for him to hit this stuff. If he does hit it, he's getting a fraction of the value of it. And this is why stock is such a valuable device. If employees get stock, and the CEO gets stock and everybody in between and retail investors get it and endowments get it and your retirement account gets it. Everybody rows in the right direction. Is it perfect? No, people can buy back their stock. They can do a little gaming on the margins, but it is the most pure system we have. Everybody has a share of the company. So if you're a socialist, you know, like you should actually kind of appreciate Additionally, regulatory hurdles, supply chain disruptions, and broader macroeconomic factors could pose significant obstacles. Nonetheless, Musk's track record is marked by overcoming seemingly insurmountable odds and achieving extraordinary feats. His vision and determination have previously defied skeptics, and with his eyes set on an unprecedented valuation, he appears well-equipped to navigate the upcoming challenges. The substantial financial incentive embedded in his pay package is likely to galvanize his efforts, pushing him to drive Tesla to potentially become the most valuable company in the world, possibly sooner than expected. Elon Musk's $56 billion pay package is far more than just a staggering figure. It is a meticulously crafted strategic instrument. It serves to align his interests with those of Tesla's shareholders ensuring that he remains deeply motivated to propel the company towards its ambitious goals. While the path ahead is laden with challenges, Musk's exceptional track record, combined with this powerful incentive, makes Tesla's journey towards becoming the most valuable company an endeavor that merits close and sustained attention. How stock works, that everybody has a chance to buy it, everybody has a chance to participate, this is the model we should be using for all CEOs. They should all get a massive package if the stock goes up and to the right. It's so obvious, and this was so unfair. But let's see this flipper. I want to see their explanation. The uh, compensation is commensurate with the performance of the company. Did you vote for it in 2018? I believe we did vote for it in 2018. Okay, but this is you, about long-term value But creation. hold on, hold on. Okay. But do you believe you were duped in 2018? No, I believe we used the information we had available and made the best choice. Okay, so here's what I find so interesting about this particular choice. 73% mm -hmm. I believe of the shareholders voted in favor of in 2018. A judge has said that mm -hmm. shareholders were not informed properly. Right. If you talk to most shareholders, by the way, especially big shareholders, they say we were not duped, we, were, we understood completely what we were doing and we were on board with this. Mm -hmm. Now that this opportun almost opportunity has arrived on your doorstep, uh, to say, to actually rethink this, mm -hmm. if you will. There's a view that, oh, maybe maybe we're not getting the value uh, we, th we thought we should. Mm -hmm. You thought you should get it, but he's worked, by the way, under the assumption that he was hitting the numbers right. and, and dealing with the contract. Mm -hmm. If I told you that you were being paid a certain amount of money in 2018, and then I called you and said, actually, you know what, we're not gonna give you that money anymore, what would you do? <laughs> Great question. I, I would um, I would go to my board. You know, I would talk with my board. <laughs> <laughs> this jargon. woman is so smug. Ooh. What is her name? Karen Frost? I don't think she's smug. Sorry, Marshy Frost. Oh, sorry, I thought it was Karen Frost. I think like this is emblematic of the kind of person who is incapable of actually doing the right thing. And there's a lot of these people that run a lot of these organizations. That I mean, what what kind of an answer is that? I mean, it was a non answer. That's why I said it was smug. Let me just ask each of you. You've all started companies. Some of you are still running companies. Would you take money from her and CalPERS after that statement? Hard no for me. Yeah. But remember, she's not investing in private companies. She's buying stock on the open market. So no, no, no. CalPERS, CalPERS announced that venture are, firms. Yeah, yeah. CalPERS announced that they're an LP and they're starting to do directs. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. Yeah, they're trying to catch up. They've been behind on venture. Let's call this whole thing what it is. It was a heist. 
You had these trial lawyers. They find a name plaintiff who's got nine shares. And on a contingency fee basis, they go after Elon's pay package. What are they looking for? $5.6 billion. How does a lawyer make $5 billion? How That's is that what possible? motivated this whole thing. They don't care about Tesla. They don't care about the company. They don't care about shareholders. They're looking for a giant multi-billion dollar contingency fee payment. And they took their shot and they found a Delaware judge to basically agree with them, even though shareholders approved it. And then shareholders reapproved it. So my question is, how much are these trial lawyers going to get? Is a judge going to award them billions of dollars for what was clearly now a mistake to avoid a pay package that shareholders wanted to stick with? If they award these lawyers billions of dollars, which is what they're seeking, no one's going to want to do business in Delaware anymore because it subjects you to these stick up heists by trial lawyers. So I think that's going to be the next big shoot to drop is what do these trial lawyers get awarded? Well, well what are they going to get paid? Because they also wanted to get paid in Tesla shares. <laughs> no, I'm serious. Here's an idea. Buy the shares yourself. Yeah, they said we don't like your management of the company, but uh, we will take paid shares. in your shares. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, by the way, they got their shares and then they voted to give Elon the next pay package. So it's just a full on grip. <laughs> they they secure the bag. But Delaware is supposed to protect corporations against this grift. That's why people incorporate there. When people ask, why does Delaware have this special place that everybody decided Delaware would be where we incorporate? It was because it was predictable. Lawyers felt this was the most predictable jurisdiction that would be the most shareholder friendly, most shareholder thoughtful, whatever word you want to use. They would defend the, the, the shareholders. And here we are. The last company I started... 8090, we incorporated in Nevada, and I just re-domiciled a couple of other companies that 